Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to take apart a fairly used 3.4 liter RS 1600 that I built back in 2016. The customers had it for this period of time and he sent it back to us for a refresh. It looks like it suffered a uh, blown head gasket or lifting the head on one of the cylinders. So there's some coolant contamination and there's some uh, gas trace on the gasket, but it didn't torch or anything like that. So it looks like he caught it in time. But we're going to take the engine apart, we're going to measure it up and see how it compares to when it was new. Taking apart an engine that you've assembled from an engine builder standpoint, it's kind of a mixed set of emotions because a lot of time and effort goes into the engines and when they come back torn up, it's not nearly as exciting as when you're taking apart somebody else's broken engine. It's just kind of a step-by-step -step process that you get the parts out of the engine and you kind of get them spread out on the bench and you start to put together a storyline of what happened to the engine and generally engines that have been run low on oil or detonated or run lean they all kind of have a different signature of failure and you just try to tie that information together which enables you to report back to the customer and help them avoid having the same problem again once i started getting the engine apart it was clear to see that some things weren't really lining up there was some abnormal wear on the rod bearings where you could see where the engine had been detonated but overall, the bearings didn't look like they had a lot of runtime on them. So even though the engine had left Real Street back in 2016, I didn't believe that the engine had been run excessively because at the power level it was operated at, you'd have a different wear pattern on the bearing because a wet sump engine is generally hard on bearings once you get north of a thousand horsepower. You're kind of like piecing together this crime scene because you've seen the cylinder head and you've seen the cylinder head gasket and you've You've looked at the cylinder walls and you know that some bad stuff has gone on, but you, you still need more information to really tie it together. Getting all the mains loose, getting to look at the saddles, um, going over the bearings, getting the pistons and rods separated, seeing how they separate and whether or not there's any micro welding or damage to any of those components is always kind of a fun storyline to put together. Because when you lose an engine like this, it's expensive. And these are good components, they're high level quality components and you hate to see them live a bad life. So you wanna be as helpful as possible to save the customer money in the long run. Looking over the bearings, that stuff looks good. I mean, the engine the engine hadn't been run a lot. And later after talking to the customer, I, I got more of a timeline from them, which really started to help me understand that the engine had just too much ignition timing for the fuel that was in it. So there's some darkness there in this main saddle where the, the main cap is walked around. But we're gonna go ahead and and put the caps back on it and measure the bearing clearance just out of curiosity to see how it lines up with how it was assembled. Not to say that bearing clearance needs to be absolutely precise, but if you're doing this work at home, if you have between 2000s and 3000s on a 2JZ, you can get away with a lot. You know, you don't want to be tighter than two and you don't want to be larger than three on a general case engine, an engine that's going to be used with a wet sump, just the stock constraints. Now, Getting the pistons and pins separated, I could see that the pins had been rattled in the pistons. And that's evident because when they haven't been detonated, you can push them apart very easy with your fingertips. And when you look at the pin bores and you start to understand all this damage in the pin bore, the additional cylinder pressure during detonation displaces the oil. And then you get into this damage because the pin starts to gal the piston up like you see here. And there's really no good excuse for it. It's just damage to the parts from incorrect ignition timing, which causes the engine to detonate, which elevates the cylinder pressure. And you could see it again in the skirts because right there on that skirt, you can see where the oil has been displaced and the piston has actually made contact with the bore because the oil film is gone and then the part will start to scrub. And that's when you get that little darkness on the skirt below the ring lance. It starts to uh, create what most engine builders will call like a black rose, just the start of losing that piston. So this particular engine, the damage that it occurred ended in a head gasket, which caused them to stop doing what they were doing. But had they continued to run the engine, they would have just torn the piston up. And again, because it's a six cylinder engine, each cylinder is gonna look a little bit different because of how the engine uh, uses air and the differences in things like the fuel injector balance or intake manifold plenum balance. You'll have cylinders that are a little bit leaner, a little bit cooler, a little bit hotter and that's gonna dictate which cylinders detonate the most. Uh, generally on a 2JZ, cylinders number one and six, 
are the ones that get the most amount of abuse and most veteran tuners will account for that with lower ignition timing in those cylinders or more fuel volume in those cylinders to try to help with the cooling. Upon measuring the bearing clearance, you know, it was where I left it. I mean, again, the engine hadn't been run a long time, but it had just unfortunately been running properly. So, you know, you're looking at this stuff, you're just kind of creating some food for thought for the customer because they're going to ask these questions and you want to be able to, to reassure them that you've now gathered enough information to avoid this type of problem uh, again in their lives. Because when you lose an engine, the engine's apart for a long time and it costs a lot of money and it's hard to fix. You can see this damage on the cylinder head where the additional cylinder pressure of you know blowing the head gasket had started to etch away the aluminum and we won't even use this cylinder head again now, now that we've gotten a closer look at it because it's not really worth the risk um, of having the engine fail again due to a weakened component. Not to beat a dead horse, but you really need to be aware of how the ignition timing and the octane and the mechanical compression ratio of the engine, how those things all intertwine. There's exhaust back pressure. There's a lot of things that are at play that trap heat into the engine drop heat into the cylinder and then the cylinder can run away and detonate and when it detonates you're going to be pounding piston pin bores you're going to be pounding rod bearings you're going to be displacing the oil that helps keep the piston cool and the piston's going to overheat and all that's just in the bottom end that's if the head gasket system is strong enough to sustain the elevated cylinder pressure and if you guys have been around this for a while you'll remember engines like the early 4g 6 3s they would just blow a head gasket right away that was their fuse well, as the components have gotten tougher and tougher and tougher, you just move that failure point. Well, another thing I noticed taking the engine apart was that it had some damaged buckets in the valve train. This engine had a steel camshaft and a steel bucket. And then when you have steel on steel, you have a high likelihood of creating a situation like this where the buckets get damaged and the camshaft gets damaged. And when once they're both damaged, they'll just beat each other to death. And, and right there on the lobe, you'll get this cutter this little sharp edge that you can feel with your fingertip that will then start just cutting that bucket and damaging that bucket until you get to the point of failure. So in my opinion, if you're going to use a steel camshaft, I recommend using a DLC coated bucket. You'll have a very long life. I've done it that way back in 2012 or 13, and the engine still has very good looking buckets compared to this engine that wasn't run very long that all that stuff is torn up and it would have continued to tear up until it broke a bucket. I hope you've enjoyed this dissection. The big takeaway here is not every cylinder in your engine is running the same. You know, you have different amounts of air, the potential for different amounts of fuel, different temperature, different water flow, and all these things kind of have to be accounted for when you're doing the tuning. And this is why you should never leave the engine at the maximum power, or the maximum timing that the engine will tolerate because it'll only tolerate it under those conditions. And during different periods of heat or different times under wide open throttle, the temperatures change and things can run away. And that's when you get into an engine that has one damaged piston and one piston that's fine. And, and these pistons from the top and from the sides and stuff, they don't really look damaged, but when you look in that pin bore, it tells the tale of what was happening inside the engine. So it's good information to know. And as you grow and tune the engine further and further close to that edge, you can start to do different ignition timing levels and different fuel levels to each cylinder and try to balance it out. And believe it or not, some of the most impressive, fastest accelerating engines on the planet have different compression ratios on different cylinders to avoid the thing knocking itself apart. So thanks, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.